Uh, hi everyone, this is uh, Finance Meets Real Estate. We have uh, George Abreu here today. It's a pleasure to have him. Uh, he's a uh, you know he's a great uh, a great guy. He has done has had enormous success in multifamily syndication. Um, he's the founder of uh, and founder founder and CEO of Elevate Commercial Investment Group, and so is GNT Construction. Um, his uh, firm, uh, I think, prior to today, um, was at about over 2,500 units of real estate. I think you guys are close to 3,000 now, I believe. And his construction company uh, brings in over $12 million in annual revenue and growing. Um, so he's a, an excellent uh, guest to speak about scaling your business, raising capital. He's going to talk about the, the old school way of raising capital versus the new way. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it on to George. Uh, yeah, if any questions, uh, you guys feel free to put them on the chat or speak up um, either way. Okay, thank you for that introduction. Um, yeah, with today's closing, I actually just went over 3,000 units. Awesome. Um, yeah, that was a... Uh, one of the goals for this year. So glad to hit that. And I'm sorry, I'm still looking for no, take your time. That's okay. My slides. Um so yeah, I mean in the meantime, I'm just gonna put so so you guys, uh, I think some of you know we also have a YouTube channel. I post recordings over there. So a recording of this event will be posted there as well. I'm just putting our channel on the on the chat. So make sure to subscribe. Okay, worst case, I can just talk through it. Um, um, I don't know. So you should have a, do you have a, like a share screen button? Yeah. We no, I do. I do. I'm, I'm just looking for the actual slides. Okay. Um, okay. Let me check one more place. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do weekly events on every Tuesday around usually Tuesday at 6.30 is our, our schedule, uh, you know, just for, you know, if somebody's new in the audience here. Um, so every Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Uh, so we have different lectures focus on um, investment management in real estate, technology in real estate, like prop tech topics sometimes. Um, so that's our, you know, some topics of interest. Okay, found it. Sorry cool. about that. <laughs> no awesome. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, let me just open it. Oh, shoot. I don't know how to present on this. Okay, there we go. So now let me share my screen. You guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. All right. So sorry about that. I should have been more prepared. But um, so yeah, I'm gonna go over, ignore this image. This was from a, another seminar I had done. Um, but I'm going to go over raising capital, the old school way versus the new school. So before I get into that, I'm, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm the CEO of j and Construction and Elevate. Um, you actually said some of this already, so I won't go through it in detail, but pretty much I've been doing real estate investing for 15 years been doing syndications for the last four years. That's been my main focus. And as of today, we just went over 3,000 doors, about 250 million in assets under management. So to get there, I've had to raise quite a bit of equity. Um, this is the team, the Elevate team. Uh, it's myself, my partner, Eric, and Carrie. 
Um, and then I also, about 12 years ago, started a construction company and we do all of our CapEx renovations in-house. These are some of the projects we've done, some before and afters. Um, there's a lot of before and afters. So we do mainly uh, deep value add deals. We do have some that are a little cleaner, some class B ones that uh, didn't require too many renovations, but for the most part, we're doing uh, deep value add. And then that's some of the apartments we've, we've worked on. So George, so when you say yeah. deep value add, so when you speak in, in commercial real estate, commercial real estate multifamily, what do you call that? You look at it as a function of occupancy rates. So let's say occupancy below a given uh, percentage. Or yeah, something. and I'll give you an example. So like the deal we just closed today, it's 100% classic units. The occupancy is not low. It's high, but it's because the rents are so low under market. Um, so we're going to go in there and we're doing uh, close to a $4 million CapEx budget. We're going to upgrade all the units and then some deferred maintenance, rebrand. Um, so it, it depends. I mean, sometimes that could mean low occupancy. We're also coming in and doing a lot of um, CapEx. So mainly that it has a, a true value add component to it where it requires a decent amount of, of CapEx. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. So the old school way of raising capital, you know, what, what I mean when I say that, um, Raising capital used to be all about who you knew, and it was very uh, kind of low key, um, where pretty much you'd make a couple calls and and you'd have the money raised within that circle. Um, and if you weren't in that circle, it's kind of hard to get in. Um, now, this, okay, yeah. So I mean, you used to work work great for those companies, but um, if you weren't in that circle, it was, it was hard to get in. Uh, that was one of the cons. And then, you know, things have changed and capital, there's a lot more options for where capital can pick to go to. So um, that doesn't work as, as well as it used to. And then that's also hard to automate and scale when um, there's not much software or systems it's more of you know having to pick up the phone and, and call people so the solution to that is is what i call the new school way of uh, raising capital uh, what that means is and it's what we practice is um building investors or bringing in investors by building a thought leadership platform, which uh, includes everything from doing things like this, you know, ho hosting or attending or presenting um, at events, whether they're online or live, uh, being on podcasts, writing a book is a good way to um, get your name out there and, and build credibility. Social media is a, is a must. Um, and being very consistent with it and also trying to utilize as many platforms as, as possible. Um, you know, at first I would say maybe focus on one or two, but once you kind of master those, then you can move on. Um, I still have not uh, been able to move on to TikTok, but maybe one day. Um, so have Nothing. you been, George, so for example, speaking at events like this one, have you been able to, um, you know, incorporate that into your total leadership platform really? Because I know some people really like it and there's some syndicators who capital raise this way and have been successful to capital raise this way. Um, I have felt, I sometimes sp I speak on like analytics topics at events and um, I feel that, you know, I get like a few, a few messages after, but it's not the same kind of automation and the same structure as having your own platform. So I was just curious what has been your experience with um, sort of joining other 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got you. I mean, hosting your own events or hosting your own platform, you know, having your own podcast, that's definitely the ideal. But I have gotten a lot of leads from going to other events and going on other pat podcasts. Um, and it allows me to tap into different networks too, right? You know, it's not just my network. Yep. Um, I'm tapping into all of their networks as well. Mm -hmm. So makes sense. It's definitely not just one, like you've got to do several mm -hmm. and then you really start to see it trickle in. Got it. Uh, let me see what else I got here. So content, you know, building content out is a must if you're going to go this route um between videos and images and uh just good content um blogs uh i don't do this as often as i probably should but um yeah you know blogs on your on your website bigger pockets is a big one and then linkedin also has a a blog type section but um I think bigger pockets is probably easier than that. Email marketing, you know, having a, a newsletter go out and then um, try to really deliver some some good content to your audience and not just um, asking them for stuff all the time. You know, actually delivering good content. And then obviously there's there's networking, um, live events now. Definitely now that they're coming back quite a bit, you can't really beat meeting somebody one on one. Um, so I would definitely encourage everybody to to attend live events where there's going to be investors, and you can raise capital there, um, or at least start to build that relationship. And then trying to automate all that with, with software, right? And, and technology, um, landing pages. For the most part, I use ClickFunnels for any landing pages we put together. Um, a CRM and email marketing. Uh, I use ActiveCampaign because it takes both of those and puts it into one, which before I had uh, MailChimp and then pipe drive but it was a pain because they didn't really talk to each other um so yeah that that was difficult uh webinar hosting if you're going to be obviously raising equity for deals that's that's helpful and then um i definitely encourage in having a investor portal if your plan is to scale it just helps manage your investors um there's a lot you can do through them. I know through ours, uh, Syndication Pro, we we pay our investors through there now. And then um, they just added a code GP feature, which makes it really easy if we're going to have code GPs on our deals to, to add them in. And then obviously a lot of this depends on, on your the type of structure you pick when you go to do a syndication, whether it's going to be a 506B or 506C. Um, not sure if everybody knows the difference, but to make it easy, you know, 506C, you can only take in accredited investors, but you can market it to everybody. You can do general solicitation. With a 506B, they don't have to be accredited. They could be sophisticated investors as well, but you can't um, market it to the masses. So you need to decide which one's better for you and then go that route. Investor relations. Um, so we put a lot of focus into what we do and how we communicate with our investors after a deal. Um, and we've seen this pay off in where they, a lot of our investors are referrals from other investors. So, um, you know, we try to do things a little different where at the end of a closing, so like we had a closing today, by the end of next week, all of our investors will be receiving a package. Um, it'll have um, some gifts 
from us and then also a hard binder with all the information on the property. And then obviously they'll have access to the portal and they'll be able to track all their distributions, their K1, everything will be in there. Um, we're constantly doing updates. We try to do about once a month. Uh, George, sorry to yep. interrupt just for a second. Um, yep. We had a question. Um, Cedric, do you want to go ahead? Yes, thank you. Um, so, um, George, if it's George or Jorge, please forgive me. <laughs> Either um, way. But, <laughs> Anyway, my question is about uh, Syndication Pro. One of the things that I'm uh, starting to see is, uh, you know, a lot of us investors, we, we like to keep our investors, you know, tight. So when we go in as, like you said, like a co-GP or something like that, we don't always want the other GP to know who our um, investors are. Yeah. So does yeah, Syndication they, Pro have something like that where a function where I can keep my investors uh sort of anonymous or you know to a degree? That's the 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 best part of it, man. They 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 thought about it before they added the features. So for instance, let's say you're a co-GP on on my deal, it's my lead, I'm the lead on it, and I add you to the deal. Um, you set up your own portal. So you'll get an email and you'll go in there. You're able to add your logo and kind of add your contact information. And then you get a, a link and you send that link to your investors. Now, when your investors go into that portal, I don't see any of the leads. I don't see any of the information. I don't see anything until they actually put an investment. And at that point, I still can't see any of their contact information. I literally just see their name or whatever profile they invested with. Um, so they keep that completely separate. I don't get their contact information. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. That's and then huge. another that's thing huge. they do is so on the, on the updates, you can send a mass update through the system, through the portal. But if you, so that would come from me, you know, it would show my logo and whatnot. But if you don't want that to happen on your end, you can, you can freeze it where the update just comes to you. And then you can literally copy that and, and paste it and send it out to your investors with your logo and, and whatnot. So it's, it, it works. All right. It works well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, hi, Jorge. This is Nelson here. Nelson. Hey, Nelson. Sombrano. Hey, and uh, Jorge wanted to ask you uh, initially, you said um, classic units. What, what's your definition of classic units? So depending on the age of the building, um, usually a classic would mean something that hasn't been upgraded at all. So if the building was built in 1970, it's a unit that's still with the same finish outs from 1970. Okay. All right. So that's 100% classic. Yep. Um, heck, we might even call it vintage. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. Jorge, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions? No. Okay. So I'll, I'll keep with it. Um, so yeah, going with the investor relations, you know, we do a lot of uh, CapEx updates. So I like to let the investors know what their money is actually being used for. Um, sometimes we'll do videos on site and kind of giving them an update. We, in the past, and we're going to start doing again, we do uh, property tours. We'll, we'll, we'll invite our investors to come to the property. Once we've completed some of the CapEx and kind of walk them through and show them what, what we've done. Um, so yeah, kind of just standing out from the rest, you know, delivering, uh, more than they they expect um oh wait what is this quick highlight of the oh okay i had a video here i'm not sure if it'll play let me see
so I'm not going to play the whole thing, but that's just an example of one of the property tours that we did. Um, now let me see if I can get this back. Okay, good. You guys can still see the screen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, um, so I talked about landing pages first for a little bit. Um, this is an example of some of our lead magnets that we've done. So we put together a, a free ebook kind of explaining multifamily syndication and um, the benefits of investing in, in multifamily. Uh, I've got a checklist of questions to ask a sponsor. I've got a checklist for due diligence, you know, what to look for. I've got a bunch of those, so I'm, I'm constantly putting those out. And then once somebody clicks on that, you know, it's going to ask them for their information and, and, um, and then they'll get whatever the uh, document is. Oh, and here's, yeah. So here's a full list of all the ones we have. And then here's an example of an offering. Um, actually, this is the one we just closed today. <laughs> so look at that. Um, and let me move this in my way. So this is just giving you guys an example of um, here on the left is the the portal. So our investor portal. This is what they see when when they go to the link and they want to get more details. Um, and they can do everything through there. Uh, as soon as we put out a, an investment, somebody can go through the whole process without even having to pick up the phone or anything, um, all the way to the point where they can wire the funds. And then we have uh, images that we put out in social media and some videos. Um, yeah, so that's so you can kind of see it all come together. And then um, I know I went through that pretty quick, but that is the end of the slides. Um, you've got all my contact information here. If you want to reach out, um, and I would love to take some more questions. Hey, George, I got a question. Yep. Um, so I'm just starting my um, syndication firm, um, and I'm paying uh, someone to do my website. Um, and so right now, like my goal is to partner up with like a few, uh, you know, bigger guys to, you know, you know, do deals with, um, so like, I'm not like focused on raising capital right now. I'm more focused on getting, you know, you know, other bigger syndicators, you know, deals and stuff like that. So do you think there's, it's necessary to have, you know, the investor portal login right now on my website or do I, should I just have my website kind of plain just to, you know, show credibility to like, you know, brokers and stuff like that? Um, it depends. So it sounds like your, your main focus right now is going to be to find deals. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. So I can, yeah. So I can partner up with like, you know, guys like you and stuff like that. You know, I wouldn't, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you know, bringing deals is a good way to get into a multifamily syndication. Um, yeah. you know, we have, people bringing us deals left and right and, and we've partnered with them on on them before um i think mm -hmm. you should still start building that out and start getting some investors if possible okay i think you should keep your main focus on on finding the deal for sure but yeah not completely right off the thing is if you're able to raise some equity even if it's not a, a crazy amount of money yeah um you just bring more to the table. Okay. And that would re result in me getting like a bigger piece in equity, I guess. Correct. You could say. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So George, if I may ask, uh, what are your target markets and how do you, um, how do you go about deal selection there? Is it agent relationships or do you focus on kind of direct to owner? We've done some uh, straight straight to owners, straight to sellers. Um, we've done that by uh, pulling reports from from Coastar or Yardy Matrix and and reaching out to the sellers. Uh, we've had luck with that. We now mainly 
since we've closed several deals now and, and we've got a, a good track record, uh, we get a lot of brokers bringing us off market deals or pocket listings, meaning, you know, they're going to list it in a few weeks from now, but they're going to give us first look at it. Um, so that's mainly how we find our deals now. Um, as far as markets, uh, we love Texas, pretty much almost any market in Texas, but uh, we do have a, a large concentration in, in Houston just because the pricing has been, uh, it's been right compared to just uh, Dallas and Austin and even San Antonio markets been, uh, Houston's been a little bit further behind on, on the pricing. And then uh, we like Georgia, we like Atlanta. We just uh, closed on a deal in February in Augusta. A um, couple of different markets there in, in, in Georgia. I've uh, been looking in Florida and uh, we've got a couple deals in Oklahoma. Yeah, got it. Hi, Jorge. I don't know if anyone else was in the middle of about to ask a question, but if I can, um, I would like to ask you a question. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. So. I'm new to the real estate game. I do want to get investors. I don't have any revenue because obviously to buy real estate, you need a lot of startup capital in order to do that. And I'm also a part-time student. So I'm not, I mean, I'm a part, I work part-time and I'm a student. So what are some ways that you suggest me trying to like go out and get funding? Cause I'm sure like with not working full-time and not having experience, I'm going to get a lot more no's than you would because you have more experience than me. When you say get funding, what do, what do you mean by get funding? Like funding to purchase properties, like investors, like you have, like what strategy would you suggest for myself? And you're trying to get into multifamily syndications. Is that, is that correct? Um, this is all new to me. I'll say that. So I'm glad I'm here. Okay. I want to, purchase multifamily properties in Ohio. So I just need funding in order to do that. Yeah, I think first step would be to gain more education on, on multifamily syndication and, and mm -hmm. what it takes. There's a, a lot of different um, aspects of multifamily investing. And if you just get good at one of those, like I was just talking to the gentleman about He's trying to find deals and bring that to to others to um, create a partnership and close on it. That's um, that's smart. If if you're tr just trying to get into it, you know, finding one aspect of it and really doing good in that aspect, you can bring that to somebody else that's more experienced. Um, so I mean, if raising equity is what you think you're going to be really good at, then I think. Uh, you need to get the education on the multifamily side and then start doing that. I mean, if you can get good at raising equity, you can definitely uh, get yourself into some deals. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. The part that I want to do is mainly doing rehabs and then renting out those properties. See, that's a little different. Um, you can also I don't do know that you experience in that. I do. I do. I mean, the first, uh, 11 years of real estate investing was mainly a uh, single family and, and small multifamily. Um, probably did about 250 or so fix and flips. Mm -hmm. You can technically do that without money. Um, when I started, I, I did it without money. Um, found somebody to partner with. They, they brought the money and I did all the legwork. So don't think that you need to have the money to, to do real estate investing. Yes. And how do you, I don't know, do you have any suggestions on going about finding that partner? I know you mentioned like networking and a whole bunch of different ways of networking. Yeah. I mean, networking is going to be your best option. Um, you can go to local real estate investing associations, attend their meetings, mm -hmm. 
um, I'll probably be the quickest and easiest way. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hey, George, I got another question. Yeah. Um, so um, a lot of syndicators that I talk to, um, they're very big on um, social media, having um, a really, you know, strong uh, presence on Instagram, having a strong presence on YouTube and having a strong presence on LinkedIn. What's your opinion on that? I mean, I'm going to hold off a little on the YouTube as far as, you know, like doing podcasts and stuff like that. But what's your you know opinion, especially on Instagram? What's your opinion on Instagram, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, so mainly on, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've decided yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? I, I take it back. I take it back. I think I, I've gotten enough out of it where, where I do think it's um, you need to do it. Okay. Um, Facebook has definitely been, well, Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. Are a must. And then I would mm -hmm. say you might as well just do Instagram at that point. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's different. Mm hmm. Because a lot of people, a lot of syndicators, they tell me, um, I guess you could say one of the easiest ways to raise more capital is to have a really strong, you know, Instagram. I mean, because everyone targets Instagram and YouTube. That's what a lot of people tell me is, you know, the strongest, you know, social social media, I guess, you know, apps, if you want to say. So, I mean, like a lot of people tell me, oh, like try to like boost up your followers, like go follow if you, I'm not sure if you know who. Cody Kearns is he runs like uh, David mm -hmm. Tupin's like social media and stuff like that so a lot of people tell me to take advantage of his service and stuff like that so do you think that's something I should look forward to doing to get more followers is that yeah, yeah, yeah to get more followers but do you think it's worth paying that money so do you think it's going to help me attract more capital I, I suggest you do YouTube ads if you want to attract more people do you to ads yeah what what have you done or organically like do you have a like if i search you right now on, on social media is it am i gonna see content and yeah uh, so like i have an instagram but it has like no pictures and stuff like that like i, like, I just have like my bio so you look at my bio it just says founder and principal of AM capital group and it says uh, commercial real estate investor like i don't have like any pictures and stuff like that and I, I mean, I have a LinkedIn, like LinkedIn is where um, I, I guess I found you. I found a bunch of, you know, top, you know, top syndicators and stuff like that. So I have like a thousand plus uh, connections on LinkedIn. And I just, I connect with a bunch of people from there and stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot you can do without having to pay through Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, I think you start there and then maybe grow into uh, hiring somebody to to help you with Instagram. So you don't think it's like a smart investment to do something right away to pay someone, you know, like the couple of thousand dollars required to, you know, boost my Instagram, to boost my business partner's Instagram. And I think I'm going to, I think we're going to open an Instagram page for our company. So do you think I should like put followers in every single one? If, if you know what I'm trying to say. Because my like my, my entire goal for the Instagram is to help me raise more capital. That's the whole goal for it. I mean, that's the whole goal for all the platforms I'm on for the most part. Um, yeah. You know, I, I also find partners and stuff, but uh, for the most part, it's raising capital as well. Um, if it's the right, uh, there's just a lot of people that don't say what they're going to do. They don't do what they say they're going to do. And, and you just end up wasting a lot of money. I'm not saying that this guy's going to do the same. Um, you also need to be ready to produce that content. I don't know if, are you producing any content right now? I'm not producing any content right now. Yeah, I mean, you got to be like, ready. During the, summer, during the summer, I'm able to because um, like during the fall and the winter, uh, me and my business partner were both like full-time students. So, I mean, like during the summer, we're able to produce the content that's needed. Yeah, I mean, just take take that into account. You know, if you're going to okay. be paying someone to do it, you've got to make sure you have the time and, and that you yeah. start actually 
putting together the content. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I know Michelle mentioned YouTube ads. Uh, is that something you've had success with? Uh, um, I mean, I, I have success with LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn um, a lot to get connections, so to raise funds and find um, lenders. So I found a lot of lenders through there. Um, and, and, and even investors too. Um, and uh, by YouTube ads, I just started into this uh, digital marketing and I, you know, spoke to an expert and he says, you know, YouTube ads will bring a lot of attention to if you want to bring in audience um, to any contact you, you're trying to bring in for investing multifamily business. So that's what I've, I've, I've learned about digital marketing. If you're going to be doing digital marketing, it's uh, number one is YouTube ads. Yeah, I've heard similar. It's um, cheaper. Than yeah, it's Facebook cheaper. It's more effective whatnot. than Facebook ads and Instagram ads. It's more effective because you get more viewers. Yeah. So, uh, and you don't have to pay and the ad if they skip through your ad. So, so somebody gets interrupted, they're watching a contact, they get interrupted by your ad and they skip through it, you don't pay for it. And then you pay when they put their information, their email, their phone number, and then you have a lead. Mm -hmm. So that's the best way. Okay. Yeah, you probably need to make sure you have your um, call to action or whatever, like well positioned or I mean, I Correct. guess it's probably just the description, but that's maybe the slightly trickier aspect with YouTube. But but yeah, I mean, that's what I hear. I do know at least one. I know like some people like Matt Matt Farquaad does well of YouTube. He was here on this on this show. He he was uh, talking about YouTube ads, and you know, it's something that they do a lot. It seems that most people in multifamily syndication are not that fond of YouTube for some reason. I don't know. Why. Really. Mm, I, I don't mean, know. Some yeah. Some of them are like he's he's one example that does like a well, lot. Well, you know, uh Google is the owner of YouTube ads. Yeah, like, no, no, YouTube, yeah. The Google. Yeah, the Google's number one search engine. Search, you know, if you want to search for anything. Yep, yep. No, yeah. I mean I think it depends on I think there's I don't know if there's a single answer. I'm no marketing expert by any means. I'm more of a no that I talk to a marketing expert, so that's why I know that that's the best way. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Sure. Good, to good point in, on the to building your business. Yeah, the call to action and, and making sure you have a funnel for sure. That that's something for Anthony too. Like if you're gonna spend money on the marketing, make sure that you know where you're leading them to and that's not going to waste. Yep. Yeah, and then this guy, I can give you the contact information to my marketer if you want to speak with him and he can help you out. You know? Are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> yeah, sure, I don't mind. Yeah, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, just, uh, I don't know how you're gonna drop. I can drop down his Is it number. in the chat? Or? Michelle, Sorry, you want me to put it in the chat? Yeah, you want yeah. me to put it in the chat? Okay, I'll put it in the chat yeah. for you guys, okay? Thank you. So, um, yeah, so just so that we kind of um, don't hold on to hold too much. Um, so if you guys have any other questions, put them on the chat or just speak up. Um, you know, we have a kind of, we have George here, you know, he's been um, nice enough to, you know, to, to spend to spend some time. So, so let's use him for a bit more. I have a question for George. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah George, um, when, you do, when you were doing your fix and flips, uh, let's say you brought a deal in and you had all, you had the your seller and you um, partnered up with, with somebody that's funding the, funding the deal. How do you, how do you handle a, a split, a percentage split, a split of the, of the profits? Yeah, we kept it pretty simple back then. We, we would just do a 50, 50. Okay. Yeah, we wouldn't pay, you know, it wouldn't be like a hard money loan. We wouldn't be making any monthly payments or anything. They'd put all the money. And then at the end of the day, the profits were split 50-50. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Jorge, you said you never got a heart money loan. Like when you started out, you said? No, so I did the, these partnerships first and then I, I worked my way to hard money loans because, uh, you know, giving up 50% of the profit, um, it makes more sense doing the hard money loans. That makes, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> you did very well for yourself. Thank you. Hi, Jorge. Um, I was going to ask the, uh, about the hard money loans as well. I'm actually a broker affiliate. Um, right now, I'm working with a real estate company as an acquisition manager, um, a wholesale, com wholesale company, but I'm a broker affiliate on the side. Um, and one of the things is that I am targeting investors for hard money loans um, to kind of leverage their deals or to close on their deals. So I was just interested in hearing your, your take on hard money loans. When is it appropriate to seek out hard money lenders? When, what do you mean by when is it appropriate? I mean, um, <laughs> so uh, we had, for instance, um, I can tell you about a deal that we are still kind of working on. Um, we have a real, a real estate agent that works in um, partnership with our company. And we were trying to do a wholesale on a property. Mm -hmm. She needed a hard money lender to close in on the property, she would provide the renovations and then flip it on the MLS. So, you know, kind of recoup the money and to pay off the hard money lender. Um, this would be my first hotel if that does go through. But I'm saying in as far as when you're looking and scoping out deals, as a newbie, is it appropriate to seek out a hard money lender and start using or leveraging that debt to acquire property is yeah. that the smart route to go basically it depends on how much capital you have um you know hard money lender usually you're going to have to make those monthly payments and so if you don't have that then obviously that's not a good option okay so there definitely has to be some stored up uh, capital there yeah plus most of them want you to pay some portion of the at closing as well so mm -hmm. there'll be some upfront costs too okay um i have another question <laughs> yeah uh, go for it yeah so I, like i just said we're just starting um so do you think it's necessary at this time to open um to actually pay and open it uh open uh an llc and to um, actually pay for the website right now, do you think that's like necessary if I'm just looking to find deals for, um, you know, big guys? No. Yes. Yes, you do. Oh, I would say no. Well, okay. Why, is, why do you say yes? Whoever said yes and George, why do you say no? I say no because you don't have a, a business till you find something, until you do anything. Um, uh -huh. You know, why get caught up in, in that cost and, and getting your website and everything? Yeah. But when I'm, ta when I'm talking to brokers and stuff like that, they're, they're, like every time I talk to brokers, they're going to ask me, oh, do you have a bio or do you have a website we can check out? They want, and your so they want credibility. Yeah. So what's your, yeah, I know it's for credibility. So what's your, what's your opinion on that? It depends on the person. Look, if, if, if you need that credibility to feel... Like you can speak to the broker and, and get across as credible, then, then fine. But if, you know, myself, I know I can speak to them and, and I would probably, I'd probably network and try to pinpoint who the GPs are that I want to work with, um, okay. who the deal sponsors are that I would like to bring these deals to. And yeah, then, I already have, I already have that, like. All okay, well, if you build that relationship, I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't mind sharing their um, company deck or oh, okay. or something and, um, you know, get their permission to say that you're working with them. Okay. And then they're your yeah, you credibility. You have to build a team, you know, you have a team set up. Yeah. You well, I don't. 
I mean, I don't have like a team set up. I just have me and my business partner now. But I mean, of course, I look to expand. But I'm just, I, I was just asking as far as like just mission like credibility and all that and to pay the necessary fees to open an LLC and a website right now. So if, if it's not, if it's not necessary right now, then I mean, I won't do it. So. Yeah, no, I mean, you can have an LLC open and your EIN within two or three days. So. Yeah. Yeah. So when is the right time to do that? Anthony, um, I, I'll just jump in right here with the LLC. Kind of yeah, sure. uh, like Jorge said, you can do that in a matter of a couple of days. And in most states, you don't even have to pay for uh, the LLC. What's Well, I mean, what state is that then? Because I live in Mass and I have to pay about $1,000 just to oh. open an LLC. Did you go through the state? No, I went through, I checked on, well, I'm getting $1,000 from LegalZoom. So Correct. About yeah. Look, go to your state, um, uh, yeah. Secretary of State website. Okay. Secretary. And in most states, it's either little to no money to do. Okay. So, yeah. LegalZoom, yeah. yes, they'll do it for you at a cost. I mean, yeah. my first LLC, I did have LegalZoom to do it. However, yeah. once I realized that I could go to my state and, I, and I'm in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. um, that I literally could get it done for little to no money at all. So um, I would, okay. like I said, go to your uh, state um, department, yeah. Department of uh, State, okay. Secretary of State. Secretary. Well, I, I'm going to jump in here too, okay, uh, Anthony. It seems like you're you're very young, um, like kind of yeah, millennial, and so I yeah. guess the 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 paperwork part of it of getting the LLC, they make it seem it is a big thing to have. It's a great thing to have. However, yeah. it's more technical. There are forms that are literally asking you, going step by step and answering them. You're giving them a, a mission statement of how your company is to operate, uh, how many people are involved in your company operations. So that's mm -hmm. why when Cedric and, and Jorge are telling you this is literally like at a drop of a dime, you can get those things set up. There yeah. are companies that are, you know, kind of middlemen or middle companies that try you know they get compensated to do the work for you because hey we live in a capitalist society and who doesn't want to get paid for off of lazy people <laughs> but yeah. uh essentially uh, if you if you go extra the extra mile and go to your state's website i live in maryland um mm -hmm. delaware is fairly simple as well which is right across the border from me it's just yeah. a matter of going to the actual source of the information of the, the information state, the, state, the state is going to be the one that actually gives you the LLC and um, process the paperwork for you so that you're legit in your state. Okay, so I should just go to the state of secretary's website and I should Absolutely. be- Absolutely, or, your, or your department of commerce. So anything okay. that regulates the business division in your state, that would be okay. a good place to start. And most of these places also have databases for new business owners um, starting out. So you can actually get the information or somebody who you, hopefully you will find somebody that's helpful in those departments that can also help you navigate the, the process. Okay. Um, I do recommend you get a, if you're going to have a partner, yeah. you know, get an operating agreement and, and have an attorney draft it um, and make sure you understand it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like paperwork between me and my business partner, what would that look like? I mean, like we're both best friends, so like, I mean, I trust them and everything. So is there something that we still have to sign between each other? I would. Okay. okay. It's still, it's still <laughs> business. You got you to gotta have Yeah, business is business, man. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I mean, I trust him. Okay. No, I know it's yeah. money. It's my wife was my business partner. We still had an operating <laughs> agreement. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Actually, I, I, as a matter of fact, since, since you're married, you do have an operating agreement. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> oh, wow. Good point. Nice. You're, you're, you're legally married. You do have an operating yeah. agreement. I guess. Um, hey, yeah. hey, I... Sorry, Go ahead, no. here. Yeah, we just had a question from before on the chat, so I can't continue to raise it up. So the question was, can you share your, you partly mentioned, but your story of your early capital raises for syndications and what were some of your uh, learnings and challenges? Yeah, um, I can start with my first one. So my first capital raise, I wasn't even supposed to raise for. Um, 
I was doing what Anthony mentioned at first. I was, I knew I could find deals. I had the experience from the single family and I kind of brought that over to the multifamily. So my plan was to find some deals and do all the legwork and uh, asset management part. Um, but I partnered with somebody that had the experience in raising the capital and also um, signing on multifamily loans and brought this, this was the second deal that we were going to partner on together. And um, he wasn't able to raise enough capital. He had a couple other deals he was raising capital for. So I had to kind of just step in and, and do it. Um, I had started slowly building that uh, platform and, and, and networking. I just hadn't put it to the test. So um, this kind of pushed me to do it. And I was able to raise what we needed. I think that was a million on that one um, from my side. And we were able to do it. It was a good, uh, good experience. I kind of liked that. I thought I wasn't ready, but I really was. I was kind of just not pulling the trigger on it. Um, and w one of the things I was trying to get across was you got to take action and you've got to not get stuck in this um, website entity, like take the action and then those things can come. If, if you're getting deals, don't worry, you're going to get your entity um, structured. You're going to get all that stuff done. First thing is get some deals. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, make, make connections with brokers and all of that first and, and, and then build your investors um, network. Uh, George, uh, I'm also doing hard money in case anybody is, uh, has a need for hard money. Uh, we do construction loans, fix and flips. Um, our loan started at 100, 100,000 to a couple of million. Um, I put that information in the chat if anybody's interested. Uh, yeah, it's in there. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, any other questions before we take off? We have a, a couple more minutes or about five minutes. Um, I had a question for Victor, since he mentioned he does hard money loans. I wanted to know, what are your requirements to get approved for one of your loans? Well, if, you, if you're just starting out, it's a problem. We usually look for a little track record as far as how many deals you've done. Um, experience is, goes a long way. Um, and uh, basically, you, you have to have funds to... to uh, you go into your deals. You need some skin in the game. Uh, other than that, uh, it has to be a good deal. If it's not a good deal, you're not going to get funding. The numbers have to make sense. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I'm just going to say I haven't done any deals so far. So do you not work with newbie investors? Or is it like just a little bit harder to get funding? No, it's not so much. It's not that it's it's higher. It's just that it's it's difficult to get the funding if you don't have the experience. You you're going to have to get a sponsor, especially when you start uh, multifamily. You, you got you you have to get a sponsor. If you if you have the experience, then then you then you're pretty pretty well set. But if you reverse your shoes and put yourself in a lender's uh, position. Yeah, you're not going to lend money to somebody that doesn't, you know, uh, never did a flip or never got involved. And the last thing a lender wants to do is see you go downhill and, and lose your money or lose your time. And everybody's, everybody loses in that case. So uh, experience goes a long way. That makes sense. I know um, just speaking to some hard money lenders, some of them have told me that they use the house as collateral. Yes, yes. If you have collateral, that's that's a plus, of course. I mean, it's uh, uh, depending on the collateral, you should be good. But okay. still, you know, even if you have collateral, if you have a problem and, and you don't have the experience, you, 
you don't want to you don't want to lose what you have you know what i'm saying guys uh, sorry to interrupt just if you have any questions for our speaker as well because we 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 need to take off soon so i wanted to make sure we, we have uh -huh. Sure. Yeah, I got I got yeah. one more question. George, I got one more question for you. Yeah. Um, so if I really want, you know, if I want to become a successful syndicator like yourself, um does credit score matter? Is my credit score not gonna uh you know be looked at anyway? I mean I already have a good credit score, but I'm just saying like in the future or anything like that, is my credit score gonna be looked at? It depends. I mean, if you, if you want to eventually sign on on the loans and be a key principal in the deals, then yes. Yeah. Okay. If not, then okay. no. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, Cora, this is Nelson here. Um, uh, your capital, right? Um, as you as you progress, where is it coming from? Is it mainly accredited investors? Is it institutions? It's mainly accredited investors. We do 506 C's for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. And they're just uh, high net worth individuals looking to place funds. Um, we have done mm -hmm. institutional and private, <clears throat> private equity mm -hmm. before. Um, and we'll continue to do that. But uh, for the most part, it's, it's um, high net worth individuals. Mm hmm Okay. And what kind of minimums and what type of returns are you, are you uh, talking about with these folks? We usually do hundred thousand minimum. And then uh, our targets are somewhere from a 1.8 to a two equity multiple with a uh, IRR of 16 to 18% um, with an average mm -hmm. eight, to nine percent cash on cash mm -hmm. cap rate yeah what's the average oh that's a that's a tough question to answer is it the, it's all dependent on market and are we talking about going in cap or like do you do six percent or above on the cap rate <clears throat> do you the cap rate then it's not a good deal <clears throat> yeah you can't in the markets we're buying, you can't find anything under 6%. Um, yeah. I mean, no, anything over 6%, average. sorry. What's the average? But you said it depends on the... On the yeah, because I mean, some of the, the deals we buy are value add deals and, and it's not going to be a good going in cap. But once we add that value and stabilize the deal and then look at the purchase price, then it's going to be a 8%, 9%, 10% cap. Okay. But we're not going in at that cap. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Uh, uh, Jorge, did you say um, seven to nine percent pref? Um, if we do a pref, it's usually uh, around an eight percent. But I said a uh, average cash on cash. Oh, somewhere, cash. Yeah, somewhere between eight and nine percent. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, and Jorge, th thank you for your answer from before. Yeah, no problem. Does anybody else have any, any questions? Okay. And uh, if we're able to call you to for anything, for like to if we want to raise money or we can contact you. Yeah, I put my email in the chat. We okay. Start, if you want to send me an email and. Uh, you know, give me a little summary of what you're thinking. We can kind of take it from there. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, uh, one last question uh, for, for me anyway, uh, kind of piggybacking off of Michelle's question. Um, like how, if we have a deal, right? How early in the deal would you guys like to be brought in if there would be a, a, a partnership? It depends on your on your level of knowledge. I mean, if if you can underwrite a deal, mm -hmm. um, then I would definitely want. You know, you could take it further. You can take the deal, underwrite it. Um, the more you do, the easier it is on whoever you're presenting it to, right? Right. Um, you know, if you're just gonna shoot me an email and tell me, "Hey, I saw this deal." here i mean it's like okay cool what do you like 
Well, you um, know, yeah, more details, you can't just. Yeah, the more details, the better. Um, you know, where it's coming from. There's so many of these so called off market deals and these wholesalers out there trying to do who knows what because half the time they don't even know what they're saying um because there's so many people involved so many layers um so i'm not sure if that's a direct answer there but just the more you can do with it the better mm -hmm. yeah yeah now now I, I i see through you know i i see exactly where you're going with it yeah thank you mm -hmm. you're welcome Perfect. Okay. Nice to meet you, George. Thank you so much. It was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet all Thanks of you. Everyone for joining. Yeah, thanks, George. That was great. Awesome. All Appreciate right. it. And yeah, we had a few questions. So that, that was nice. Thanks. George, thank, thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, everyone. everyone. Have an amazing day. Thank you. Bye.